second tragedy on Guyana soil has transfixed the world for years, for many decades in fact. But what do we know about the Jonestown Massacre? We have been treated to a number of narratives, a number of spins over the years. Most of it has focused on the charismatic leader or preacher, Jim Jones. But what about that Guyanese experience? Tonight we talk with Captain Rodwell Astell Paul about his experience on November 18, 1978. Sir, you are part of uh, Guyanese history. Uh, your contribution to the aviation sector is well known. And uh, there is one particular, um, one particular incident in this country. You don't focus a lot on it. It's not a major part of your life. No. We just spoke about how um, you've seen a lot of spins on it. And I felt it was necessary to talk to you also. Um, to get an idea of what happened particularly on that day and what you can remember and recall about the Jonestown uh, tragedy. What can you tell me about yourself? Um, well, I've had a pretty long career in aviation. Um, fortunately, I've been able to fly for all these years and not any, had any major problem like crashes and you know that kind of thing um it has been rewarding i i guess i'm upset with quite a few things which i'd prefer not to talk about now um uh but where June Stung is concerned, I mean, I, I really knew, I went in there myself and Captain Spence. Uh, we went to bring the... Um, U.S. Congressman? The Congressman mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And... Um, having... I think we took some passengers in from Tamari. And having landed and waiting for them to, for the congressman to come and, uh, we, we sat there and we just saw these guys in the trailer coming out and um, some people were, loads of people had come to board the aircraft. I couldn't understand why. Because, you know, the system where, you know, you have passengers, they put on a manifest, mm -hmm. and whoever is going to be going out has to be accepted by the person who has chartered the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You had taken a, a specific amount of people in, in and, and expected to take a specific amount of right. people out that did not include a huge group. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people wanted to go out. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, I saw this tractor trailer, coming and we were waiting on the um, person who I think Jackie Spear would have been the person to um, you know give me the list, the list of people and um, all hell broke loose the, the shooting started um, these guys were shooting from the trailer. This is as they drove up. To yeah, the they airstrip. drove, they just drove around, and uh, mm -hmm. and I had, I, I was in the aircraft, and I went out, because we were going to start up to get out because we would have had a, um, a, a time problem trying to take off after sunset. Yeah. You know. So. I. Went out and, and they were just this guy Steve Sung. Uh, can't remember the name of the. There were the three NBS, photographers. Uh, the NBC reporter. Reporters, I, right? Yeah, producer. Yeah. They were filming on the on the, on the right side, just behind the propeller. And some young fellas were. When I looked through the window, I saw that the young fellas were. We were just starting up, and they were sort of 
walking backwards into the propeller. So I ran out to get him away. And this is where I was caught with the, the gunfire. So um, cause by that time, the tractor trailer had come and circled and they were shooting, you know, at will. And um, <laughs> I started to run because I remember seeing a little house on the opposite side. And I started to run towards the house towards the house and then I said, but this doesn't make any sense because I'm exposed. So I, I ran back towards where these guys were filming. And, and as I'm going back, talking to them, saying to them, somebody shooting. When I, as I looked aside, the guy with the um, camera, he wasn't there. And then when I looked, when I glanced, because I mean, the distance is like where we are here. Mm -hmm. But they were shot and they're now falling. So I just lay down right there among them, hoping that they will figure I have been shot, probably dead, so they won't hurt me. But then the, the shooting continued because it went wrong and they started shooting this side again. So, and I'm hearing these bullets passing over. You know, I'm saying this doesn't make any sense. Let me just get up and run. Let them, if I'm going to be shot in my back, well, that's it. You know. And I started to run across to where I did the little house. And then a guy came out with a big hat. And he says, Captain, come, come, let me, um, he say, you don't know what you miss. And, and but the, the thing about it is this shooting was still going on, you know, you see, then I, I, I lay down in some bush on the other side and the, the trees, the, 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 the grass was so tall that when the bullets passed, they were just clipping them, you know. So I said, but this still doesn't make any sense. So I got up and I said, I will run. That was a GDF aircraft that they had on the ground. Mm. I got up, started to run. Then I remember there was a truck that they had bought parked in the middle of the airstrip, about three quarter way down, which gave us enough distance to land. Land, and, yeah. And I thought I would get some help from the truck, not knowing that the truck was involved in the whole plan. Because the plan was to, apparently, when the aircraft took off, mm -hmm. shoot the crew. Because if you're in a truck, mm -hmm. aircraft taken off, you could shoot, you know. Yeah. So the plane would go down in the Kaituma River. So they thought. And Jonestown could still continue mm -hmm. because pilot, whatever, pilot error, pilot died. You know. Of an accident, right? Or you know, that kind of a thing. So, um, but I am running to them looking for help, and no help. So, I continued down towards GDF plane, and um, as I got there, um, the soldiers were going in the dugout at the same time with me because there's a little dugout meaning a, 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 a big ditch, mm -hmm. dry, or not a little more than that. Um, they were going in there, same time as I was. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't get any help from them either. So everybody seeking shelter yeah. from, from the shots. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, and on my way there, I passed um, Tommy Fernandez as a pilot. He, he had come in with a small aircraft mm -hmm. to take out some people also. Apparently, apparently the, the, the congressman knew that some stuff was happening mm -hmm. and they knew. Mm -hmm. The people were deflecting right, all of that. Right, right. So that they, I guess, they charted our aircraft and then charted this other guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he brought us out because I, I was, when I was hoping, I, I had planned to spend the night and try to look after as much as I could until we could get help. But then the president or the prime minister, I think, said no, 
wants every he wants everybody out. So I'm saying I told Captain Spence, I said, look, let me, I'll stay. He said, I said, no, 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 no. If you're not coming, I'm not. If you're not going, I am not going. So I said, but Captain Spence, somebody needs to stay. He said, no, no, no. The president says everybody must. The prime minister says everybody must come. Out. And um, the story it might sound a bit disjointed because it's 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 a lot of different different things were happening. Yeah, at, you know, at the same time. Because like after the after the dugout, when I figured the guys had drove in and shot and and they exited, um, I went to now see <laughs> what I was dealing with in terms of. Those shot, those dead. But you know, Captain Spence was in the aircraft, mm -hmm. and um, a guy by the name of Dick Dick Dwyer, Dick Dwyer, I think is his name. He was the charge of fear mm -hmm. of the U.S. Embassy. Of the U.S. Embassy, and he was in the cabin. And as I got in, he said um, he was shot in his buttocks. And she, but at that stage, and I, I said, I don't want to see that, you know, because mm -hmm. to me, <laughs> you brought me in this here. I, I don't want to see. He got some bullets on his buttocks, you know, three bullets, I think. And um, then I, I said, we, we decided we would try to see if we could get our aircraft going so that we could probably take off and bring out whoever we could. Yeah. So, right engine wouldn't fire because a bullet had passed through the aircraft and hit the fuel control unit. Now these guys obviously had some high power rifles because when I look back, I, I was trying uh, there were a couple other, couple, a few people sitting in the aircraft. So I said to them, I said, look, this aircraft is not going anywhere. Um, could you please come out because we have to lock it up? And, and everybody came off. And there was one woman who was sitting down in the, in the last seat by the door. So I said, I looked from the cockpit and I said, Madam, kindly exit the aircraft because this is not going to fly. And she didn't move. She was just sitting like this. So I came out the seat and I went and I touched her and I said, Madam, you have to come off. No response. So I looked at her. She was just really sitting there. Her eyes were, I came out there, opened her shut, but she was obviously dead. So, come on, I, no action. So I called the third crew, a guy by the name of Glasgow. And I said, look, we gotta get this lady off the aircraft and put her down. So we were lifting her down. I was on top. We had her hands, you know, cross. <laughs> Lifted her up. He was going down with part of her body. Mm. And I'm having her like this. I re at that time, you don't know where this, you know. I, she's not moving. Mm -hmm. And I had my hand here by her. And as we came down the step, her head went back like this. Wow. And this whole scalp came off, and her brain came out on the step. At that point, so we put her to lie down on the ground, and um, then is when I started, because the whole thing with the, the rum and rubbing people up and so on. I think Jackie Spear had a bullet somewhere by her left. Left. Jackie Spear, the assistant to right. the congressman. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I left my t shirt. And, uh, then we now have to plan what's next because our aircraft now working. And Tommy Fernandes, obviously, he had a bullet through his cowling, but it didn't damage anything. So he, oh. his aircraft started. We said he will, um, because the president said we ought to go. But there was a girl who was shot. Um, her name is uh, 
Monica Monica Bagby. Monica Bagby, yeah. A shot in her back. So what I did is I, 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 I left one bottle of rum and I walked with half a bottle. Put her to lie down in the aircraft and I was rubbing because her back was swelling like raisin like bread. I mean, the, I, you could just look at it and you could see the, with her, with her heart being a rate and thing. So I was sapping the wounds because she got some bullets on her back. Yeah. So I was rubbing it with this on the flight out. So on the flight out, it was Tommy Fernandez was the pilot in command. He was in the left seat. They had Captain Spencer was in the right seat, and I was crouched behind Tommy Fernandez mm -hmm. with Monica Bagby lying down, and then the third crew was down at the, at the back, mm -hmm. the bottom. A small aircraft, mm -hmm. single engine. Um, so we left, took off, and that uh, Port Kaitua was scary. But coming down to town, coming down to to Mary, when we got by. I was looking through the window, so I saw Hog Island. Um, I was born near Skiba, so I know the place. I saw Hog Island, so, and I know we're going to come over by Perica. Mm -hmm. So when, we, when I'm looking at the tip of leg one, good. But when we got <laughs> by Perica Stellan, I noticed this aircraft coming down. I mean, we were down. Tommy was probably down to about slowly going down, but I, probably about a thousand or eight hundred feet or something like that. So I said, Tommy, where are you going? He says, That's Timeri. I said, That is not Timeri. But you're telling me? I said, That is not Timeri. That is the Perica Highway, if you want to put it that way. We still going, still listening. He would have, I uh, mean, yeah, young guy killing Jones, so you come here now to land on the highway and that. That makes mm -hmm. sense. So he saw lights. Saw yeah, the lights, because the lights of, you know. Yeah. I said, Captain Spence, we have a problem. So then he looked, because he was writing and thinking our logbook. So he wasn't really focusing on what was happening. So he looked up and he says, Oh shit, Tommy, yes, man. I still is right. That's Perico. We are just flying over the stelling. I'm seeing people walking on the stelling. Mm -hmm. And he took it and pulled it up and we went to Timeri. There we were met by I think the president ordered us in his at his residence after. So we all were bundled into a helicopter and taken to there was the um, American ambassador, president, minister of foreign affairs, the police top brass, Balam Ragobir was there, Sk Skip Roberts, Noah McLean, myself, Spence. It was Spence. Spence, me, and Tommy Fernandes sitting in a tree, in a row, and the president was me. Um, various questions, you know. And um, that was a very, I don't know what to say. Um, Uh, at that moment, you know, um, but I, I was in the union of Ghana with pilots. So we were not really liked by the establishment. Captain Paul, you told us about, you know, running on the airstrip as you dodged those um, bullets and uh, seeking cover. You, what was going through your mind? Like, was there any idea of what? 
really was happening at that time. Obviously, people were being killed, but could you? Is was there anything? No, at that, that time I didn't know. You you didn't know. I didn't know mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, I think Captain Spence might have known that, that all was not well mm -hmm. at Jonestown. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me anything. Well, there's nothing to tell me really because. Mm -hmm. It would have been something that he saw in taking them in, you know, figured that, you know, something is not right. Mm -hmm. But I don't think either of us expected this on the Saturday, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, you know, if, if I could just shift back a bit and I, I'll sure. come back to you. Sure. Um, my, my wife had sent me at that time, this happened on the Saturday, on the... On the Wednesday, I did a flight to Barbados. My wife had sent me some camera lens, because I do a lot of photography. And um, I waited at the airport to pick it up from a cousin coming in on Pan Am. So I waited, collected the lens, and as I was leaving the custom area, I saw a lady with two children, and an elderly woman, mm. she's crying. So I stopped and said, Madam, what, what, what's, the, um, what's the problem? Oh, son, um, she's come to worship at Brother Jim. And they're not allowing her in the country. I said, but why? They didn't fill out the immigration forms. So I said, okay, there, I, I, let, me, let me see if I can help you because the immigration form is not a really, I mean, it's no big shake. So. Um, I think one of the children, one of the girl, a girl and a boy, one was I think 12 and one 16. So I said, okay, I got the forms and I said, okay, you fill up this one. And she told me, she said, Sunday, they can't do it. So I said, okay. So I held the girl's hand and I was going to, you know, took her passport and mm. signed the name. And now, as I'm saying this, I think my problem with the whole of Jonestown, if I had left that woman at the airport and immigration had sent her back to California, she and the two children would have been alive. I mean, not now, but I mean, uh -huh. they, I mean, the children would have been alive now. But here it is, I am being this good <laughs> smart and I'm helping. Because she says she has to come to worship with Brother Jim and so on. And, and she asked me, there was a lady who she should, who was meeting her. Um, I think she got shot in Washington or something like that. Um, uh, I can't remember her name, Adams. I can't remember her name. Um, so uh, but when I came out from, because I, le I left her to now go through immigration, I came out and I saw the lady and I said, your passenger are going to be out soon. Mm -hmm. And this is the Wednesday. So she'd have gone into Jonestown on the Thursday. Mm -hmm. And she'd have died on the Saturday. Now, uh, that, that, that was... That, That's quite a tale. Yeah. And landing at Parikas. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, um, come back to your, your question. Um, just just go back. Sorry, Deb. Yeah, so, I was just asking if you... you no, did, I, I knew, you did, no, you no. Didn't know I, I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So I was really just running for my life. Yeah. That day. Mm -hmm. Running for my life because I don't know what's happening. I don't... And because I, I guess it's, it's good I didn't know because not knowing, I was able to go and lie down with the, with the yeah. congressmen, with the, with the reporters, mm -hmm. lie down among them and, you know, hoping for the best. When you were in the plane and you took off, were there any conversations being had? Um, about what had transpired or anything you at mean all? You coming back to town? Coming back to town. No, no not at all. Everybody no. was silent? Everything was silent because I was trying to keep this girl back, be mm -hmm. alive basically, mm -hmm. by rubbing her with this thing and I'm hoping that the rum is going to work because mm -hmm. 
I know this is when you think about being a boy scout and you know the things that you had to do to mm -hmm. um, no there was the the only the only talk we had was about the landing was about, yeah mm -hmm. when I said to Spence I said look look something is wrong here well, look what Tommy's doing you know mm -hmm. um and then when we got to the residence um, the Prime Minister said, you know, you know I would you like something to drink? And I said, no, I'm good. And he offered Tommy some Fenzik, I think it was, because Tommy, I think, said he had some headache, I think so. And he blotted out, I don't need Fenzik, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, was Jackie Spear on that flight? Or she was on another. No, flight. no, 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 no. She was left at my at my at Port she Hattuma. Nobody left. came out that night. Okay. We are the only persons coming out. Coming out. Mm -hmm. I think the reasoning was that if we came out, uh, we could tell them what happened. Happened. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said I I was prepared to stay, uh, mm -hmm. but Captain Spence didn't want me to. Mm -hmm said, if I'm not going, he's not going. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, well, it's a good thing we did come because if Tommy Fernandes had come out by himself and we, if we had put, let's say, if we had put some people who we thought were casualties on board, but casualties not dead, but I mean... Yeah, the injured or... Injured, someone. you know, um, we would have had more problems. Mm -hmm. We would have had more problems because mm -hmm. Tommy was bound to land at Perico. At Perico. Yeah. Hmm. It's quite scary. It is, it is. It is. I mean, you know, to uh, it's like my, my chief pilot, um, Malcolm Janus, who to have flown all these years and then get hit on high street with a crazy minibus. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you know, that's a part. So. Yes. Uh, and, and you said uh, when you were meeting with Prime Minister Burnham, uh, nobody had known that the um, what was going on no. in Jonestown at no. that time. They didn't know that time. No. Mm -hmm. no. When when you would have first oh, learned? I of I think I might have gotten that um, during the night when I after getting home mm. because I didn't get home from that Jonestown escapade. I didn't get home until about four, eleven o'clock the night because uh, I had to go to the police and give a statement okay. and the police, he was on duty for 24 hours and he didn't eat so they brought food for me, I gave it to him and I sat down and I, I said, look chief, I have enough common sense, I will write a statement out, mm -hmm. exactly what happened and I'll bring it here tomorrow and give it to you. Mm -hmm. The police have a way of, and when you did this, what happened and when this happened, what happened? And what was your first thought when you heard that this major tragedy had happened upon the heels of okay. what had happened to you? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, don't, I can't say that I had any... Okay. Uh, I think a couple of days after when this whole thing sunk in and... Um, they had to fly these huge aircraft to come in here to pick up the bodies and all of that. But it really hit me that, you know, this here is more than, more than, because I really had never gone into the Jonestown. Because mm -hmm. you just fly, you land at the airship, you put them off, mm -hmm. you put them on and you take off. Um, and then I had, like I'd gotten involved in tourism here. And I had suggested to the tourists that, that why, why don't we use Jonestown to bring tourists in. But the speaker of the house now, Manzuna, he said, um, no, 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 that is morbid. No, you can't use that. But then now I see they now they're doing it. So, yeah. you know. Well, that's another topic for discussion. Yeah, yeah. Too. No, we can talk from out of anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you did a flyover. Of yeah. the site. Um, Actually, when when myself and Captain Marshall, who flew over that 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 morning, mm 
Mm -hmm. And that would be the first air visual, the first visual that of, I had. Uh, that you had. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, we couldn't. Actually, we, we passed we passed the place. We, I saw I saw the stuff, but 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 our but but the time that we supposed to be over Port Kaituma, uh, over Jonestown. I'm looking and saying, but we should be here. But I'm seeing all these colors mm -hmm. on the ground. But uh, at that time, we were pretty high, mm -hmm. so it didn't. It looked like a dump. Years ago. In the country, when 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 the public works department would have these red trucks and yellow trucks, and and they were when they became unserviceable, they would just put them in a big heap. It looked like that to me. Wow. It's not until we got low, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, this is the place. Mm -hmm. These are the people here. As you look good, you've seen the, 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 the dresses, you know, dresses, shorts, mm -hmm. just a colorful array of um, bodies. And then it's sunk in, well, look, these yeah. are the bodies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know you have not allowed uh, this um, mm. event or tragedy to define your career, and rightfully so. Um, is there anything that you think about from time to time? In relation to Jonestown? No. No. I, I, I don't um I I don't think about it at all. Mm -hmm. Um when my son asks me for information I will give it to him and then mm -hmm. you've come now and Yeah. But more than that I I've gone past Jonestown. I mean, I, I don't wake up in the night and thinking yeah, about it, you know. As I said, any time it comes into my mind, I think about the lady who I allowed to come into the country by doing her performs, mm -hmm. and I think about landing at Perico. Though I, those are the only two things that you know would would jar me, you know. Mm -hmm. The rest, it's. Um, the word for it. Um, not, I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, having to go in the dugout and so on. Um, if I was allowed to, I don't think I would have been able to change anything. To spend the night, I would have been, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I mean, I, I'd have been able to give some guidance as to what could happen, you know. Because my thinking said, no alcohol, no, 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 no surgical stuff. Let's let me buy some mm -hmm. rum. Mm -hmm. So at least you know. So it was amazing when I heard. I mean, at least Jackie Spear was able to say she drank some rum the night, sips of rum or some something mm -hmm. to that effect. Yeah, you know? she did. Yeah. Right. She but, said that much. Yeah, but Do you that, know whatever happened to Monica? Monica Bagby. Mm -hmm. No. No, I am. Um, there's really. Uh, who do you get information from? From yeah, yeah. You know, there's no. Um, I guess everybody has also moved on with their lives and, yeah, and different yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, this guy Steve Sung, I think he's still alive. Steve Sung was the cameraman, mm -hmm. and he um, he was lying down on the ground, and his camera was still turning, was still running, mm -hmm. and he got shot. But I think he's still alive. Because, mm -hmm. as I said, when I got home, about 11 o'clock at night, um, my sister, two sisters, they called me from <laughs> Long Island and said, you all have a lot of problems there. So I said, problems? No, I, I don't know anything about that. Yes, um, congressman was shot and thing. I said, I don't know. Then my wife said, um, I still be, I said, just got home. But you don't fly so late. I say, yeah, well, I had some stuff to do. And, you, know, you did not tell anybody. Did, uh, you did not. Said nothing. Mm. And then I called my, and then, and then I asked to speak to my sister's husband. Mm. And I told him, because I know if I tell them, you know, it's, it's confusion, you know. 
I involved in this thing. And so I told him what had happened, and I said, look, just give it to them in pieces. You will see, see fit how to do it. Um, but I was there. You know. I imagine that you've flown to Port Kaituma over the years, but yeah. you have have you gone back to to where Jonestown was at any? No, point? I went to Port Kaituma. I went. Well, I I know. Let me let me. I I went into Jonestown. But I, the, the stuff is really new to me. Um, I saw a tractor. <laughs> I think that's about it. I didn't see much. A lot of bush. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like it's been overgrown a lot of vegetation. You've been in there, you've nothing. been in No, I've seen photos yeah. over the years. I know you touched a bit on your photography um, that you would have done, uh, or, or still do. And um, I know you mentioned uh, the site as a, an attraction. There have been talk about dark tourism here. And I know it's uh, something that is uh, promoted in different parts around the world. Oh. Um, wherever there is tragedy... Yeah, yeah people um, make money out of it. Mm -hmm. You make think that is something that we should pursue? I would think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean... Just one minute, let us truck pass. Let's... This is a very busy street. Yeah. I did not realize it was so busy. Well, since they fixed the truck, since the, 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 the street was bad. Uh -huh. I think it better they had left it the way it was. Yeah, I did not realize. So where is this coming? This truck is coming from a particular... And they, they, they probably pick up garbage. Okay, and they're passing. Whatever. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah, Captain Paul, um, you feel that the site is something that can draw tourists? I would think so. I would think so. I would think so. Because I don't think a lot of people who had family here have put closure to the old stuff since 1978. Mm. I I think that they would um, be glad to come down, have a look at where the father, mother, whatever, you know. Mm. Uh, I, I think so. Okay, so. I think so. Um, but I, I, I heard recently that they're trying to, or somebody had brought it up again mm -hmm. about um, doing something like that. Mm -hmm. But I had mentioned it a long time ago and Mr. Nadir, I think is Manzu Nadir, right, he said, no, 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 this is, no. That's when he was tourism minister, right. I assume. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we end this conversation, is there anything else that you'd like to, to share with us as we close this? I know you mentioned that your son, you have handed yeah. over a lot of your... Yeah, I've given, I've given all the stuff I've had. Mm -hmm. And um, he wants to do a documentary, I think. And um, I, I, I've been toying with the idea of writing a book, but uh, my problem is really I have to get somebody to sit down with me and you know do it, and um, I could give them more because flying in Guyana is a is a challenge. Yeah, I have lots of stories. I would imagine a lot of stories. I mean. Um, endless stories, you know, just endless stories, and uh, if I get somebody else to done, and I, I put a book together, you know. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this edition of Prime Conversations.